I wouldn't have found that without video games. If I hadn't been playing Overwatch, I was awful. <laughs> but if I hadn't been playing Overwatch at this awful level in teams that were bad, I would never would have found some of my closest friends. Um, that you know, like I said, all over the world, I've got friends in in Germany, Switzerland, Spain, France. Um, some in the US I've still not visited yet, but I want to. Um, and I wouldn't have met any of them. I wouldn't have, have felt as comfortable as I would be to talk to them. And the first people I ever came out to were people from these Discord servers, these communities through Overwatch. I'm Echo. Uh, I coach and I commentate for Valorant and do some Overwatch and other FPSs as well. Yeah, so I think one of the main things that I do as kind of a commentator, I've kind of done tournament admin as well. So I've run some tournaments uh, within the Valorant and Overwatch space. One of the main things as part of EDI that I make sure I'm doing is to get player pronouns as just as part of, you know, in, uh, kind of integrating the players into the tournament, getting them in with their teams, is finding out their pronouns, finding out their preferred names, because it's not always what they go by on the internet. Uh, people might prefer to go by a real name. Uh, so making sure that my commentators, whether it's myself or people working with me, uh, are following the pronouns and the preferred names that are on the kind of call sheet that I give them uh, is a big thing. Uh, personally, I'm quite loud, <laughs> to be honest. Like, at a very base level, I'm just quite loud about what I think is right. Um, and that, you know, if there is some difficulty, if there is some potential... Um, some potential kind of, you know, just in general difficulty around EDI if people are feeling uncomfortable to speak up. Um, so in the teams that I coach, I make sure that they have one-to-ones with myself or with another member of staff in the team um, so that they can bring these things up um, on a one-to-one basis and feel comfortable to do that. And I think that's important in all organizations and communities as well. Having a group of different moderators that represent different communities because you know as a non-binary person i might not want to go to someone that's cis about an issue of someone being kind of transphobic against me i might want to go to another trans person so making sure that you know these moderators are widely you know have a wide intersectionality um is very important yeah sure so i mean i think as a lot of people that have um you know our marginalized gender non-binary trans um as a lot of people do, I've, I have felt marginalized quite often. Um, in the esports space, it's people on my Twitter uh, just kind of commenting on posts about me talking about game changes, the Valorant tournament scene, um, saying, oh, well, you'll never be a woman. I'm like, well, I don't want to be. <laughs> um, and, you know, all kind of transphobic comments coming through like that. Um, but even sometimes in my broadcast talent team, so, you know, as a commentator, you work with observers, producers, other casters, hosts, they sometimes just don't get pronouns right. They don't understand how I express my gender. And, you know, I, rel- I present relatively mask, although I consider myself non-binary. And that can really confuse people. And having open and honest conversations, like I said earlier, kind of bringing up the truth and just being open in kind of, you know, relatively one-to-one situations, so you're not kind of shaming people, um, is a really important way for me, at least, to kind of call people out, but in a nice way and kind of with an education focus rather than a you did something bad focus. It gives people a space to feel safe, I think, at the end of the day. Um, being able to kind of come into the women sports, you know, Discord server or, you know, on, on the Twitter and be like, actually, I know that I have people here that will support me allows me to feel comfortable to, to try things out, to feel, to feel comfortable, you know, being like, oh, I, try, I did some makeup the other day. I'm not going to go do that in, you know, the main Valorant server because... Maybe the moderators aren't equipped to deal with transphobia in the way that, you know, people in women's esports are. Um, and having the, those kind of communities, women's esports is a great one, and there's many others out there as well. Having those communities to feel safe in allows you to explore and to feel comfortable and to be yourself at the end of the day. I mean, like I said, it, like it feels quite small. It's, it's one syllable different, right, in a word, um, which can feel... I think tricky for some people to get through. And like I said, I present relatively mask. People that see me on the street probably think, oh, they're probably another he, him. Um, it does hurt. It hurts every time. Um, even, even, if, even if someone says it with good intentions um, and, you know, like I know that they're trying to and, you know, they're trying to kind of reimagine who I am because if someone sees me for the first time, like I said, they might think I'm a man um, and that hurts in itself. Um, but if people are trying to to learn to use the right pronouns and to see you as the right person. It's like, it's, it, it's important and, but it does hurt. And I think the best thing for me is when someone does make a mistake that they, if, if they don't notice, which a lot of people don't, honestly, <laughs> because like I said, it's, it's one syllable. Um, 
if people don't notice, then I might call them out on it. We'll have a quick chat, and they'll apologize, and they'll try and do better. And if they if they notice, a quick apology, and then I'm sorry, I'll do better, and then continue. Um, one thing that I think a lot of people do when they do make the mistakes is they go too far into it, and they start apologizing for themselves rather than for the person they're apologizing to. Um, and I think that's the big thing. Is if they're apologizing, I want it to feel like they're apologizing to me, not for them, if that makes sense. Honestly, it's about that safe space and having, you know... So I started out in Overwatch in, in esports in general, um, which Overwatch has a pretty mostly diverse kind of cast of characters in the game. Um, and it's got a pretty good diverse player base as well. Um, and I, so, so I started competing in teams um, and then I was kind of like, okay... A lot of the teams maybe weren't um, weren't as inclusive, I think, as I was hoping that they would be. Uh, so then I found, you know, an inclusive server with people that were also, you know, LGBTQ plus women, um, and that the, they were specifically made to be that safe space. I wouldn't have found that without video games. If I hadn't been playing Overwatch, I was awful. <laughs> but if I hadn't been playing Overwatch at this awful level in teams that were bad, I would never would have found some of my closest friends um, that, you know, like I said, all over the world, I've got friends in, in Germany, Switzerland, Spain, France, um, some in the US I've still not visited yet, but I want to. Um, and I wouldn't have met any of them. I wouldn't have felt as comfortable as I would be to talk to them. And the first people I ever came out to were people from these Discord servers, these communities through Overwatch. Uh, so it's helped. I don't think I'd be here as who I am today without video games. We can empower them with events like this. Like, like this summit, we've got viewers, people at home watching, and you know, they'll watch. You know, we've got, we, like we have transgender people talking, we have non-binary people talking, we have people of color. We have this wide, diverse range of people at this summit right now talking downstairs. And watching that representation talk through the difficulties and talk through how they got through those difficulties allows people to empower themselves rather than us empowering them, which to me is quite a big difference, is people that I know myself and that I've tried to you know, help support through transitioning their gender or you know, coming out as LGBTQ plus in general, I want to make sure that they are empowering themselves with assistance rather than me you know, making them feel better. Um, so you know, giving things like this where they can just feel represented and then empower themselves there. It, like this is an incredible event. Um, like even on the panel that I that I was just on downstairs, I I learned things on that panel talking to the people that were on the panel with me. Um, being be able to be a part of the first one has been an absolute honor. I was not expecting to be reached out to. Um, like when I saw this coming up, and it was it didn't really hit me until I'd sat down in that panel with the with the lights and the cameras and the microphones everywhere that I was part of something that I genuinely think can bring such a good amount of change to the UK and to DEI, both within esports and out of, you know, we've got sports journalists, not even esports, um, downstairs making, you know, being part of these panels and making it public. Um, and to me, that's the most important thing. And I'm, yeah, just very honored, very happy to be here.